Good evening, and welcome to Meet the Candidates. I'm your host this evening, Paul Herring. Uh, I know you've been watching Nikki and might be a little disappointed I'm not as cute as she is, but rest assured, we're going to be asking the same questions to the candidates that I interview that Nikki asked to hers. Now, uh, I appreciate you guys joining us here on Public Access, and my guest this evening, you know, I've already forgotten your name. Monica Galloway. No, that's not it. <laughs> it is? It is the one I'm giving. Okay, our guest this evening is Monica Galloway, and she's going to tell you what board she's running for. And actually, let me ask the first question. Why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself? Um, my name is Monica Galloway. Okay. Um, I am a resident of Flint, been in Flint for about 18 years. Yeah, talk up for me a little I'm bit. I'm originally from San Diego, California. Okay. Um, I've been married to my husband for over 25 years. All right. He is a born and raised in Flint, Michigan, and so about 18 years ago we moved here. Okay. And so now I'm running for the seventh ward. Nice, nice. Why, why do you think that you're qualified to, to run for Flint City Council? Well, um, according to the charter, all you have to do is be, um, not all you have to be, but you have to be a registered elector um, in the ward in which you um, seek to represent. Okay. Um, so therefore, ultimately, my citizenship <laughs> is enough. Right. Being in right standing with the citizenship. Okay. Um, and... Uh, the vote of the people, the endorsement of the people. Okay, now I, I've got to ask you to go beyond that. We know what the minimum requirements are. Mm -hmm. You have to be 18 years old. You have to be a resident of the ward. Right. But then there are some other things mm -hmm. that you have to feel qualify you to, to be on the council. Well, the number one role of the council is um, to be a check and balance to the mayor. Okay. They're responsible for the budget. I have over 18 years of banking background mm -hmm. um, in which I've held various positions in the banking industry. I'm a licensed realtor. Um, I have the best interests of the residents. I live in this, this area. Mm -hmm. I raise my children. And so um, I feel like my education that has been acquired through the workforce um, prepares me for such a position as this. Great. In your opinion, mm -hmm. what do you think are some of the biggest problems facing Flint? Well, we know that um, the economy in Flint is one of the biggest challenges that we have. Right. Um, and because of that, we find ourselves losing um, employers. Mm -hmm. um, and when you lose employers, you find people um, in what they call poverty, right. um, which the simple definition for poverty means that you lack the necessary possessions, material possessions, and money. And when that happens, you, one, either vacate your property or you move in with other people. And when that happens, we have abandoned homes. Mm -hmm. and we have crime. And um, when people are in that state, there's a desperation, which leads to the crime that we have. So that's one of the biggest challenges. How do we bring the necessary employers back into the city so that our economy can grow. Okay. Now, you've been here for the last two emergency managers, I believe, right? I you have. said you've been here. Mm -hmm. What did you think about them? Um, I guess some people call it an assessment. I call it a tax. When they build everyone in the city for the Genesee Towers and they build everybody in the city for the, the streetlights. Okay. Well, with the Genesee Towers, um, in my research, the both parties, the city, which represents the residents, mm -hmm. and the owner of the Genesee Towers entered into what's called a binding arbitration. Mm -hmm. So they both agreed to have an arbitrator come in and settle the dispute for them. In that, the favorable decision was on behalf of the Genesee Tower owner, thus meaning we were all responsible for the decision that was ultimately given. And so that's where that tax came from. And so, um, if that makes sense to you. It does. I mean, okay. I know where the tax came from. Okay. I'm more interested in where your standing is on it. Do you well, think that it was uh, uh, fair to assess the citizens, that those dollars? Well, or? if we're responsible as a city, um, I believe that we support our legal system. Our legal system worked. Mm -hmm. And we were responsible. The judge deemed us responsible. And so I support the way that our legal process works. Do I feel good about it? No, okay. Nobody feels good about extra taxes, but, but now, the now system you works. do know that they turned around and after we, the citizens of Flint, bought the building, sold it for a dollar. I do know that. And N now, how, how does the justice system work with that? Do we all get a hundred thousandth of that dollar? No, and, and, and Paul, you and I weren't involved in that. 
I can't say anything about that. I'm talking about how we got our assessment, right. how the emergency manager has responded, why he sold it for a dollar. Am I disappointed by that? Absolutely. But what I'm talking about is what I can speak on is why we were taxed and what my, my thoughts are on, on that. Was it a dollar is unacceptable, but that, that's not something that we can do. So How about the uh, streetlight assessment? Now, the streetlight assessment, from what I understand, um, we pay about $2.85 million. Um, that comes out of the general fund, which also funds the public safety, which funds the police officers. So that was assessed in um, to make sure that we didn't have to lay off more police officers and firefighters. And so when you look at it in that context, although it's a sacrifice for me, it's a sacrifice that I'm well willing to take as opposed to taking more police officers or firefighters off the street. That makes sense. You're wonderful. <laughs> Why are there disparities in the water rates that the citizens of Flint pay versus the county folks? Well, one of the things is, um, and I call the city of Davidson. Did you call them? Because I wanted to find out how they assess their water. Okay. Um, they have their own treatment plants. Um, one of the things, um, uh -huh. but, and so their water rates are about $7 less, um, now. Per the, unit, right? Or well, per... the difference is for the city of Flint, a unit is 749 gallons of water. Right. In Davidson, theirs is a thousand gallons. So I looked at one of my bills and it came out to like 4,000 Five hundred gallons now, do we of water. Sell, we sell Davis in the water, though, don't we? Now I don't know that we sell Davis in the water. You asked me about the disparity of, of between, of the, between the, the amount. So okay. how we do our water is not part of that question. Okay. <laughs> and so when I looked at um, that, the rate that they have and the rates that we pay, there was a difference of about sixty-seven dollars a month. Mm -hmm. And so th that's. That's, uh, that's well, I know that they, 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 that the city when the, the city did the increase that they did it to the service fees, as opposed to the the usage. So the bottom line is, if you decide to take three less showers a week, you're not going to save any money on your water bill, because they've hiked up the uh, the service fees. Well, they have, but when you look at our service fee, and I and I just kind of did apples for apples mm -hmm. with um, the Davison water, they charge a hundred and thirty three dollars per quarter, which came out to about $43 per month. We pay $53. So it was a difference of like $9. Mm -hmm. And that's that that service fee and that you're speaking fee. of. Right. Even if you don't use any water at all, that's right. what you're going to pay. Right. And so I didn't find that there was a big difference in that, though. The difference was actually in this case, my case alone, mm -hmm. that it was in the water. Okay. What do you think about a required training for city council people? I think that would be a great idea. Um, I think anytime you're on any job, you need training. Um, but when you look at the government level, I think that that's a great idea. You need to have some people that have done it, that are well versed, that can walk you through the charter. What does this mean? How does this apply? How do you implement it? So yeah, training is always a great thing. Now some people are, 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 are pursuing the idea of shrinking Flint making our footprint smaller in order to save on utilities and city services. Is that something you would support or be against? I think I would need more information on what that shrinkage really looked like. How would it truly affect? Would it be beneficial? But if it was benefit, beneficial for the residents, yes, I would support it. And one of the big things that uh, this new council is going to have to deal with is the new Kira Gandhi water uh, program or project. Are you familiar with that and are you for or against it? Well, um, it's funny that you say that. Um, when I looked at an article, I know that it's not currently on the table right now because of the cost of it. Now, that's an article that I read that was dated May 2nd of 2013, that with everything that was going on, that project didn't make financial sense with where we were in our finances okay. and so I would need more information to find out you know how how I know in the long run we're gonna um, you know save quite a bit but can we financially take on a project of that magnitude mm -hmm. that's what I want to get 
And I'm going to ask one final question before I give you an opportunity to speak to the um, to your constituents. What do you think about the emergency manager law? In less than 18 months or so, the council is going to have the opportunity to perhaps vote out the emergency manager. Is that something that you would support or not? It is. I think that um, we have a local government um, that should be responsible for the day-to-day -day business of the city. I think it's good for the city. I think it's good for morale. And so I definitely would support um, putting that responsibility back into the hands of the leadership chosen by this, the residents of this city. Great. Go ahead and take a moment, look at the camera, and convince people to vote for you. Um, well, um, I, I, I hope, and, and forgive me for, um, I'm a little bit nervous, um, but I hope that people will um, seek to find out a little bit about who I am. I realize that people vote based on people that have the same values that they have. You'll find that I'm a resident. Um, I pay my taxes. I, I look at the water bill just like you do. Um, I'm concerned about crime and how it affects our homes and our children. And um, I just hope that you'll come out, get to know me. I'd love to get to know you, and I, and I think I'll do a great job for this city. Great. Thanks for joining us. You guys have been watching Meet the Candidates, and we'll be back.